Hi, my name is Bob Cawthon, and today I'll be talking about the advanced analytics Sun Microsystems includes with our Unified Storage 7000 line. Because the same software runs on each model in the 7000 series, the analytics I'm going to talk about today are included in every model in the 7000 line and are a no-cost option. Analytics is a prime differentiator for Sun's Unified Storage because it allows a level of visibility into storage that has never been available before. Not only does it provide advanced diagnostics, but also helps manage, optimize, and troubleshoot. This combination ultimately helps administrators discover root cause issues in minutes, not hours, minimizing impacts to your business. Analytics provides a simpler way to visualize what is happening to your Sun 7000 storage. It could provide a high-level overview of your system, which I'll demonstrate here shortly. But it can also provide a drill down on a number of items that allow you to be very specific with what you'd like to see. Not only does our browser-based administrative interface allow you to visualize what is currently happening, you can also save, export, and manipulate historical data with external tools such as Excel, Star Office, or even Open Office. So why is all this important to your business? It's important to your business because analytics provides you the tools to answer key questions about how your storage usage affects your business. You can answer questions like, how much storage is being used? What's your storage system CPU memory utilization? What type of performance are you getting from your solid state disk and or your traditional disk? Which apps and our users may be overutilizing the storage? Additionally, analytics can also answer questions like, which files are hot right now? How many reads are taking place versus how many writes? And finally, how much network bandwidth is being used for a particular user or a particular client or a particular application? These are just a few of the many stats you can gather with analytics. When answering these questions, you can group analytics into what's called worksheets, again, something that I'll demonstrate shortly. These worksheets can then be extracted for further analysis. But before the demo, I'd like to stress a few key concepts. If you're watching this video, you should already have a basic understanding of the storage architecture that Sun uses as a part of the 7000 series. As a quick review, Sun uses DRAM, solid state disks, and traditional hard drives to create a hierarchy of faster and faster devices for data as it moves to and from the CPU. We purposely leverage the best attributes of each device and its function to create a single entity managed as a whole that we call a hybrid storage pool. There are three key concepts you must understand when watching this demo. And they are one, the ARC, or the Adaptive Replacement Cache. Put simply, this is the DRAM cache. This is the cache where the most frequently read and written data is kept in DRAM. 2. The L2 ARC. This holds the most frequently read data. The important thing to remember is the level 2 ARC is kept on solid state disk. These are known as readzillas. Sun currently uses 100 gig dedicated solid state drives for readzillas. And finally, number 3, the ZIL, or the ZFS intent log. This is very similar to a database log in that it caches writes that are outbound on the way to traditional hard disk drives. The ZIL can also take advantage of solid state disk, and Sun uses 18 gigabyte solid state drives for LogZillas. So let's begin the demo. When you first log into the administrative interface to the 7000 series, you're presented with the status dashboard. This dashboard is a status at a glance health overview of how the box is currently doing. We pick these top level areas to display, and of course, all of these use analytics under the covers. We picked CPU, network, disk, NDMP with respect to backup, two versions of NFS, NFS version 3 and version 4, iSCSI, and SIFS. If you look at each area individually, take for instance CPU, you'll see that each box will show you a graphical representation of the last 60 minutes of data. In addition, looking left of the hourly data, 
you'll see the last 24 hours of data. And if you look farther left, you'll see the last seven days, which is shown as a daily average. Historical data can be kept further back than that. It's completely up to you, but this is what we show in the status dashboard. In addition, you can see the services that are activated. Everything that is green is currently enabled in the lower left-hand corner. And if you look further down, you'll see that all of the hardware also is in an OK state based on its green status. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see the storage capacity utilization. Storage used versus storage available. The compression rate. And more importantly, the memory. I mentioned the ARC previously, or the Adaptive Replacement Cache. And here you can see that, at a glance, we're using about 57.6 gigabytes of cache. This box happens to be uh, a single head in a 7410 cluster with one expansion tray, one readzilla, and one logzilla with 64 gigs of RAM. So let's look at the analytics in more detail. By choosing the analytics menu item, you're taken to a blank analytics screen. Here you can add statistics and create customizable stats in a form that's, that's called a worksheet. If you want to add a statistic, click on Add Stat. This brings up a menu of categories. The categories are broken down like this. Backup and Restore, CPU, Cache, Disk, Memory, Network, and I believe unfortunately Protocol may have scrolled off the screen. But say, for instance, an average administrator will want to know the performance of their disks that are contained in the appliance itself. And we can look at disk performance from its lowest level, obviously from the drives themselves. And we, so to do that, we choose disk operations or I.O. operations. So from here, you can see more choices broken down by type of op, di, uh, broken down by disk itself, each individual disk by size, latency, offset, etc. So let's look at it by type of operations. Choosing this will show you the percentage of reads versus writes. And say you wanted to look at the number of reads in the box. You could certainly highlight the reads to give a nice graphical representation of what percentage of reads are being performed versus writes. So using this we can drill down actually farther by clicking on, you guessed it, the drill down button. So from here you can see and look at specifically reads by disk, size, latency, offset, etc., etc. So let's look at reads by disk. Here you can see that all the disks are listed and all the performance listings are there as well in the number of IOPS. So you can see the highest performing disk for reads is at the top. It's averaging about 140 to 160 read IOPS. So if you look at the configuration details of this box, then you'll, you'll, re you'll realize that this particular disk that I just highlighted is actually the Readzilla solid state disk in the head itself. So that's looking at read cache from a device level. But let's look at it one layer up at the cache layer from the hybrid storage pool layer. So let's close this worksheet and zero it back out. Let's add another worksheet, but now let's focus on the read cache level 2 arc. To do that, let's add a stat, but look at the stat from the level 2 arc layer. By choosing Level 2 Arc Accesses from the menu, you can see the Level 2 Arc stats presented. What can be displayed is the Level 2 Arc broken down by hits and misses, by file name, by share. So let's choose broken down by hits and misses. By looking at the number of read hits versus misses, we can see how cacheable the read, the read parts of our workload are. 
The result is a graphical representation of read cache hits from a level 2 arc versus read misses. So this chart shows about 139 to 140 hits to about 270, give or take a few, misses. From here, of course, you can drill down even further. So let's look at, for the number of hits we get, which files those hits equate to. So of course we select the drill down icon and we're presented with hits by file name, by project, or even by share. So let's look at by file name. So from this view, you can see which files for all of our file-based protocols that we support actually reside in read cache and hence which files are considered hot for this particular workload. That looks at the internals of the box, but now let's look at some external factors. Say you want to look at all traffic that's going into and out of the appliance. You can add a stat and look in the networking category and look at IP packets. Here we can see we can break it down by host name, protocol, direction, etc. So let's look at IP stats, IP packets broken down by host name. So not only do we have a list here of all other hosts that are talking to our storage array, but also of the network packets to and from each of these hosts. And as you can see, there's one box utilizing a good portion of the storage. And this happens to be a Sun V490 running a workload generation application from Sun called VD Bench. So after selecting the host that's generating the heaviest workload, we can, of course, drill down farther. Having looked at the status dashboard previously, we know the majority of traffic this appliance is handling is NFS traffic. So here can we can look at the details of NFS traffic specifically from that host to see what that V490 is asking of our storage appliance. So after selecting the host and then the drill symbol, you're presented with options. And here we can select NFS V4 operations. After that, you're presented with a graph of the NFS operations from that V490. So let's take this even farther. Say the administrator from that host had an application that is running, quote, slow. You can drill down and look at latency or the time the storage array is taking to answer storage requests from that host. Again, click the drill down button and look at or choose latency. By using this data, it can be shown that the majority of responses are taking less than a millisecond. There are a few edge cases there, but for the majority, as in about 26 to 2700, NFS ops are taking less than one millisecond. It's a great response time. So with this information, we could then go back to that administrator of that host and say the problem is not with the storage. Maybe go check his network, his network connectivity, his host, or his application. With that, that ends the analytics demo. I hope that I've given you a brief but thorough overview as to why Storage Analytics is a product differentiator for Sun's Unified Storage 7009. Thanks for watching.